My favorite one is, are you going to die if you get a paper cut? <laughs> That's probably my favorite misconception. My name is Dakota Rosenfeld. I live in Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm a full-time pharmacy student at UMKC School of Pharmacy. I have severe hemophilia A, so hemophilia A is a factor VIII deficiency. Um, I was diagnosed at 13 months old, and I've been living and thriving with it ever since. Hemophilia is a disease where you are lacking certain clotting factors. You need to have clotting factors, many of them, in the very end to stop a bleed. It's like a domino effect, so if one piece is missing, all the other ones are useless. My parents did a pretty good job of making sure I lived a normal, active life. The first month or so, they were pretty hesitant because they had absolutely no idea what was going on. But once they reached out, got resources, they found out more about the condition, they said, okay, even at this early day and age, this is going to be something that we can all manage. 50 years ago, the life expectancy of hemophilia patients was between 20 and 30 years. The main problem was there was no treatment. The only way that you could do is transferring blood from a donor in the hope that there's enough clotting factors so that you can stop the bleed. I think with the advent of the recombinant proteins, you had an endless resource of, of these clotting factors, and that was the time when you were not looking for just treating a bleed when the bleed occurred, but to not even have a bleed occurring. For me, it was very re rewarding to see the progress here, uh, that for a patient community that were basically, yeah, was doomed to die early and or to become crippled, that they can live a really normal life. I use a recombinant clotting factor, and I actually infuse every other day. It doesn't take much time. It takes five, maybe 10 minutes out of my day to do it. And treating every other day gives me the peace of mind knowing that my factor levels are high enough at all times to make sure that I don't have any breakthrough bleeds. Earlier on, I definitely saw it as a burden, but it's just something that you get used to. I am so excited about some of the new treatments that are <laughs> being developed. There's treatments out there that are in clinical trials where you might be able to do one treatment, be one and done. Hemophilia is a genetic disease where the patients have a defect in their DNA. As the hemophilia patient is having a kind of faulty factor A gene in the case of hemophilia A, what you can try to do is replace this factor, that's the replacement factors, but you can also try to do this permanently by adding the gene which is responsible for expressing this factor VIII. And that is done in gene therapy where the gene is encapsulated in a shuttle so that it gets to the liver where actually factor VIII is mainly produced. And then once in the specific cells in the liver, it expresses factor VIII. An alternative to gene therapy could be the use of genome editing, a technology such like CRISPR as Casibia is working on. We are trying to make a cut into a genome which is safe to be cut, and we insert the factor VIII gene to address all the patients with one treatment. So having seen the first results in gene therapy and also what we are doing at Casibia with CRISPR technology, I'm very confident, actually, that there will be a cure one day. My hope for hemophilia treatment is I don't want it to have to be a conscious thought for hemophilia patients. I don't want to have younger hemophiliacs ever have to know the pain of sitting there watching your friends have fun outside while you're inside for three days because you've got a nasty ankle or knee bleed so you can't get up and move. Knowing that we're transitioning away from that and getting to an area where you can stop worrying about that and you can just live your life is a huge monumental improvement in my book.